Hi everyone, it's Lauren and this is part one of my October wrap up. So all of the books that I've read in the first couple of weeks in October. So the first book that I finished was Hot Milk by Deborah Levy and this book was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize which is why I read it. I've also read Swimming Home by Deborah Levy which I really loved so I was really excited to read um, this new release by her. This is about a mother and daughter and the mother's legs have mysteriously stopped working. Sometimes she can walk, sometimes she can't walk and so they go to Spain to see this specialist doctor to see finally what is wrong with her leg. She's been plagued with illnesses her entire life. It's more about the daughter coming to terms with herself, coming to terms with her relationship with her mother and her own identity than it is about her mother's illness. But there's also the question of whether her mother is really ill. And it's a slightly oddball, slightly off the wall novel in the way that I felt like I was watching like an Almodovar film. Like it just is it's very weird, but it, there seems to be a lot of symmetry, a lot of meaning in everything that's happening. And although it's a little bit strange in terms of plot, it's almost like it's very, very controlled. And while I appreciated the cleverness of the novel, I almost felt it was a little bit contrived in terms of things wrapping up a little bit too neatly. Some of the themes and some of the points that Levy was trying to make, I think came, a, I felt like they were being hammered over my head a little bit. It's almost like it was too precise and too clever and I couldn't just get swept up in it because I was noticing what she was doing the whole time, which is a shame because generally I really enjoy a Deborah Levy's writing. But I find with a lot of books that are shortlisted for, or long listed for the Man Booker Prize that I have this massive expectation going in and I did have quite high expectations for this novel so there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it was very clever, I just was a little bit underwhelmed I suppose. The next book that I finished was Night Waking by Sarah Moss. So I read Sarah Moss's latest novel, The Tidal Zone, um, earlier this year and I absolutely loved it and I wanted to just read everything that she's ever written. So this is the first book in a series of linked novels. The premise for this is a family with two young children have gone to a fictional island um, in the Highlands of Scotland where uh, this woman's husband has an ancestral home and they're living there for a while while he investigates puffins and she's a fellow at Oxford Oxford University, she's a professor, but she's taking a break onto the island to look after the children. She's supposed to be writing her book about um, childhood in the Victorian ages, and while she's there, she starts investigating a situation on the island um, where children were dying within sort of eight days of being born of, between a period of about 20 years. And this is based um, in fact, but this is a fictional story. What I really loved about this novel is that Sarah Moss's writing of families is just so real and so like funny, but also really, really honest and I loved those sections of this family um, in the, on the island and it's just such I mean I'm not a mother but it felt like a very true painting of motherhood in that she was lo she loved her children but also dealing with a toddler and a seven-year-old is very very trying and I think that came across really really well but these sections are interspersed with letters from people on the island um, in sort of the 1800s and that part of the story was equally interesting but very differently written so I like this sort of past and pre present juxtaposition. Overall I wasn't as impressed by this book as I was by her latest novel but I think that's to be expected because people's writing develops and this is an older novel by hers. I definitely want to read the second two in this series. They're kind of linked. I don't think you have to read them um, all together but that is Bodies of Light and Signs for Lost Children. I believe. So I definitely want to read those because I really enjoy her writing. The next book that I read in October was I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou and this has been downloaded on my Kindle for an immense amount of time so I'm very pleased that I finally got around to it. This is an autobiography of Maya Angelou's life from childhood up until the age of about 16. Um, when she was a child she grew up with her brother, um, with her grandmother in the southern US and her parents were divorced and at different places in, in the north and she spent time with her grandmother, time with her mother and father and back again and it's really really interesting looking at these different cultures in these different places while she's growing up herself and kind of changing her opinions on the world around her. What I really loved about this was Angela's writing. I thought her writing was so beautiful and it's very interesting the way she constructs her life because it's almost like these sections of things that she remembers so it's like isolated incidents things that burn through in her memory from when she was a child and yet she almost manages to mythologize them or it, it 
it turns into her coherent story and it's very interesting because her writing is very beautiful and I think there's an element of the unreliable narrator in here because obviously this is Maya Angelou's real life but it reads like a novel because of the way it's written um, it reads like fiction almost rather than an autobiography and I think that poses a really interesting question because it's not um, the character of Maya Angelou being purposefully unreliable but it's like this is someone's real memory so how much of it is real how much of it is looking at it through the eyes of a poet, sort of, sort of through the eyes of someone who wants to create a novel out of this. And I, I found that aspect of it very, very interesting. So I'm really pleased that I finally read it and I'm looking forward to reading the next books in her, <laughs> I was gonna say in her series, but obviously of her life, because I think she's written uh, more autobiographies from, you know, 16 and upwards. And then the last book that I read in the first half of October was Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. This book was not what I expected it to be at all. I think I thought this was going to be more like a fictionalized version of I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. I don't know why, but it's so much more than that. This follows a young girl called Janie and she, when she's 16, her grandmother sees her kissing a boy and so she marries her off to a much older man. Um, and it's sort of about her going through different marriages, going through different men, going through different periods in her life. But through Janie going on this journey, uh, what we get is a look at all these different aspects of black culture in America at the time. And what Zora Neale Hurston is doing is taking the oral culture of her mothers and grandmothers and the everyday lives um, of African Americans and bringing it into the higher form of a literary novel, which was at the time a kind of new idea because this is written, like all of the speech is written in dialect. And it's a novel that seems to manage to say a lot of things without it feeling too allegorical, which I thought was very impressive. Something that I really liked um, in, as part of this novel is that when Janie is talking about her grandmother who married her off, she's saying sort of her grandmother was born into slavery and she kind of escaped from slavery or slavery was abolished during her lifetime. And then when she had her daughter and her granddaughter, she kind of looked at what she wanted a woman to be. And she thought, oh, if you could just sit around and be someone's wife and not have to work, that would be amazing. But then when it comes down to Janie's generation, she's like, I don't want to just be a wife. I want to do this and that. I want to marry for love. And it's that sort of evolution of expectation. I think it's the kind of book that you could really study because there was so much in here and I feel like I almost didn't get it, well I definitely didn't get it on the first reading, um, but I thought her writing was so interesting and she's definitely someone that I want to explore more of because she's written some non-fiction as well and I'd be really interested to see what that kind of style of writing is like because this is almost so literary so I'd be really interested to see what it's like reading something just completely in Zora Neale Hurston's own voice. So I'm quite impressed with myself reading four books in the first two weeks of October because I've been in a little bit of a reading slump uh, recently so I'm glad I could kind of get back in. Um, do let me know if you've read any of these books and I will see you in my next video. Bye! In this series I'm going to be inviting guests onto my channel to bring their own books to discuss and also bring some booze as well. You didn't bring any alcohol, but that's okay. You brought something else, didn't you? What, what, what are we drinking today? I am brew! Should I explain what this is? I think you should, for all the people who are yeah. not Scottish.